So what I didn't show in the last video, but what you might have saw was um, all the upper cabinets are sitting on top of an MDF bench top base. I usually don't use MDF, it's extremely heavy um, and the, the dust is, is quite toxic compared to other stuff you can cut in the shop. But this is going to be a laminate top and I find it to be flatter than plywood. So I just cut that down and all of the cabinet tops are sitting on top of that and I'll show you the laminate process a little bit later. The face frames for all of these are very simple because there's no drawers um, uh, or doors on these, so they don't have to be a certain size. And the span of the shelvings is well below uh, two feet, so they don't have to be thick. They're not holding up a bunch of weight. So to simplify this, I just use one inch poplar. And as you saw in the last video, the tongues I made, I make a receiving groove on that poplar, and then I could just pop all the face frames into place. It's pretty simple. I have my blade mounted off center, so it's gonna cut almost a perfect quarter inch groove. Um, it will remove the two sides with a little bit of material left in the middle. I'll remove that as well, but then you can see how this will pop in place. I'll hide that plywood front, give a nice solid connection. Now this process is the same if you are doing something with doors or drawers. Um, usually in that case, all I do is depending on the span, of the width of the span, as well as the weight the shells might be holding up, I just make these face frames a little bit thicker, but it's the same process. If you are thinking of doing a built-in, um, I know these are one of the more intimidating things just because of the size. I find making cabinets somewhat easy at this point. It's a very repetitive process. If you know how to do it, it's easy to repeat. And um, this style of built-in without doors, without drawers, is really simple. If you are thinking of doing one of these, I recommend starting with this sort of style. This I had this whole thing done um, minus paint and the laminate and the torsion box, which you'll see a little bit later. In about less than a week, I had this whole frame done and um, the install was a fraction of the time because of, of many factors you'll see a little bit later. So to attach the face frames, I have to go through and remove a little bit of the tongue that intersects um, at my, my, my um, spots where the, the vertical units are, are butting up against the horizontal units. You can see there, it's just gonna hit the flange. This is plywood, so it's really easy to just um, make a mark and chisel away that extra bit of material. I do all of that and then I could do the face frame. I have already done all the bottoms. Like I said, it's a really simple process, especially if your cabinets are square. All the measurements are going to be the same. You just go through on the radial arm saw. I cut all of my verticals. I could attach those and then I do my horizontals. Now these two upper cabinets are two pieces and usually I make one solid um, thicker piece in the middle there, but I wasn't paying attention. I cut all my poplar at an inch. So all I did was when I put this face frame on, I glued these two inch pieces together. It'll pop back off. It's not glued onto the tongues at this point. So I can move those upper cabinets in two sections, but it will look like one solid piece. And then for the rest of them, I could go through and put all of my, my nails in. I usually um, make the edges of these a little bit wider so I could scribe them to the wall, but this is newer construction. And when you break up all of these portions into sections, um, usually it's not that big of an issue. I kept a spare piece on the side in case I did have to scribe, but um, when you see the install video, I didn't have to worry about it. So really simple process. That left hand side is the one that butts up against the wall. So you'll notice I leave that, um, that style unattached that part of the face frame. The rest, like you see, is just a matter of, I put on my verticals, I cut all my horizontals, I glued and bratted them into place. And that is basically what that looks like. Like I said, I had all this done in a little less than a week. It was a, a pretty simple build. So then for part of this, and I'm gonna go through this somewhat quickly, um, there is a four inch wide, essentially a spacer wall on the other side of the refrigerator. 
I thought about multiple ways to do this. I kind of settled on a torsion box. It's going to be an extremely heavy duty torsion box, much more so than needed for this, based on the fact that, like I said, this was multiple sheets of three quarter inch plywood, which meant I had a lot of off cuts of three quarter inch ply. So I made the entire, entire torsion box out of three quarter inch ply, which is overkill for this process but I had it in the shop and it saved the customer money by just reusing these materials. The only downside to this made it so that it was kind of heavy to move around, but it's not gonna affect the construction. Normally with something like this, I do half inch in, in the middle. Um, so this is just basically gonna hold an upper cabinet. I had all my pieces laid out. You can see I made lap joints in the corners. I doubled up the outer frame of this to make it more structural, structurally sound. I cut my long widths and my long legs, and then I just used a block for spacing. I went through this, like I said, very quickly, so you'll see there are a couple mistakes that were easy to fix. One of the big downsides of this is because this is so thick, putting two quarter inch skins on the outside. So the spacers in between are three and a half inches. I couldn't use the dado stack in my radial arm saw. So I basically had a curve cut all of these out. You can see I'm using a spacer on the right hand side uh, or a stop to get all these cuts accurate. But I basically just have my original, my long lengths are all screwed together. So are my short lengths, so I get accurate cuts. I'm just using that stop and I'm following my mar marks on my one board. Since my spacing is equidistant from either end, I could flip it around and make all the, the tail end cuts at the same time, move the spacer and make the other cuts. That means on my long length, I'll have a sh uh, um, an odd size box in the middle, but this is one of the fastest ways I have found to make all of these lap joints. So that's basically what that looks like. Um, I had enough short sides that I made it in two separate uh, boxes so I didn't have such a long cut to make through the radial arm saw. You can see in the middle what I meant by that odd size spacing. And then I could just go through, this is plywood, so I make some rough cut curves and then I could just clean it up with a chisel. If, if this works with the dado stack, it's even a faster process to get all these cut. Now, like I said, I was making this really quickly. It didn't have to be structural. When you see the install, this is basically just a four inch spacer. So this, the, where this meets in the middle is a very, very close together. Um, I probably could have gotten away with three verticals, but like I said, I was spacing this out pretty quickly. I wasn't really paying attention. None of this is gonna affect the final product, but if you um, build torsion boxes, you will notice that this is extremely overbuilt. It could have been a little bit uh, thinner wood and, and less spacing, but like I said, I had the wood. Um, I wasn't gonna recut anything. It's just gonna be a very heavy duty spacer. So before I glue all this up, I glue together my edges, which like I said, are, are doubles. And I put little laps on the corner so everything fits together quite nicely. All of the measurements for this were based on the spacing. This has to be the same width as the other side of the cabinet so that it matches. And then there's going to be a little cubby that goes over top of the fridge. So like I said, I glued together that outer frame. I could attach my bottom skin and then I could put the grid inside and then all this is going to go in my vacuum press. So I said mis made mistakes on this. They aren't really mistakes. This is just severely overbuilt. Um, and I just want to mention that because people will watch these videos and ask why I use three quarter inch ply. And the simple answer is it's just the material I had um, in, in the shop. And then it's just a matter of going through and, and just adding glue and putting this whole grid together. I'm moving pretty quickly because this glue sets up in about 20 minutes, but um, you can see how that process looks. This is sitting on top of the nozzle on the vacuum bag, which is why it looks skewed at the moment. I could add a bunch of glue and then brad this on top. I'm overhanging this because I'm going to put solid wood edges on the, the outside of this. So you'll see how I do this once this comes out of the vacuum press. I could slide this in. This is the hardest part of the process is just getting that uh, mesh netting on top of this because it likes to stick on the corners. And then um, I let this usually set up overnight in the press and then everything comes out nice and solid. So I have a nice flat panel. 
um, for this this side of the, the the wall so like I said this is essentially being attached to the wall I didn't design this I was subcontracted for this project so the design came to me I finalized all the measurements um, they basically told me what they wanted it to look like so this this four inch spacer wall was was not necessarily my ideal but um, it does look nice in the space so the next morning I come and take that out you can see how nice and flat it is and then I'm putting a quarter inch piece of uh, that veneer ply in there and then I'm flush trimming the edges so that will give me a perfect quarter inch groove on my sides and I did not treat the top and the bottom because you'll only ever see one front edge of this and then I could go through and take a thin piece of poplar and, and fit that in the in, in the, um, space and cover that plywood edge. So like I said, I'm just flush trimming that. I had this poplar left over from the face frames and I already had it cut down, uh, ripped down. It's about three eighths of an inch. I could just add little rabbits on both edges. It will fit inside the recess of that torsion box and give me a nice solid hardwood edge. It's basically what that looks like and like I said the top and bottom one will be you'll never see because it's near the ceiling one will be touching the floor um, I did do both sides because sometimes in the space if you flip stuff around it looks a little bit better but I basically just added this poplar edging to to those two sides so then for the bench top they wanted laminate I don't love working with laminate because this is a special order color for starters, so if I made a mistake, I would have to order more, and I just base I just don't love it. Um, so I went around, and like I said, it's MDF. So there's two little sections I had to do. I cut these thin. This is a, a fake wood-looking pattern. So I cut these thin strips so that it did look like a solid piece of wood. So I cut off the edges, which will um, signify the edges. Basically, it's going to look a little bit like a. Um, an edge grain butcher block and then I cut long strips to go along the long lengths of the of the um, my two bases so with this I just use a simple cutter I know people do this in multiple ways I don't use laminate a lot I think this is only the third time I've used laminate in the shop so I just use a cutter and apply with straight edge to to cut all this stuff so those are all of my edges and then I could go through and cut my tops you can see I just have a plywood bottom. This does this cutter doesn't go all the way through, so none of this plywood gets ruined. A plywood a piece on top, I can score a couple times and then snap it off. And then that will be my side there. So I went through and I did all of my edges. I used contact cement with this MDF. I think I had to do, especially on the edges, like four coats before it was uh, built up enough to add the edging. So I could just go through and add that edging. You have to apply a lot of pressure um, in order for this to adhere. And then I had my edges. Obviously, I cut these with a little bit of overhang. The scariest part of this, and one of the reasons I don't like doing this, is, is routing all of that clean, which I didn't show with the edges, but I'll show you with the top. And then I could just attach the tops. This is not a how-to on doing laminate. I'm, like I said, I'm going through this in the torsion box very quickly. I've only done laminate a couple times. It's always ended in success, but I feel like you might get some more tips and tricks from someone who has a how-to video on this. Um, I just have only done it a couple times. I didn't want to buy a laminate roller, so I did have this kind of weighted roller from a treadmill I took apart so I that I used to apply pressure on the top of these. But you just basically put that contact cement on in enough coats for it to become glossy, and then um, you know put those stickers on so that this will stuff will stick automatically so you can line it up and then um, go through and, and trim it with the router. Um, this part's the scariest because like I said if you chip this out one of the reasons I don't like laminate is it's it if you mess up a wooden top I'm skilled enough that I could fix it without someone noticing with laminate if you chip it I really don't know the process for repairing that if there is one but like I said it turned out I routed all the edges and it will be a nice durable surface for the customer. Um, this is just getting some of the trim ready for install. The top doesn't meet the ceiling, so they wanted a flat top. So I cut these angled pieces on the table saw so that when I put the crown on, there's not a gap between the crown and the top of the cabinet. The base trim is just basically 
flat, no detailing. So I bought some flat trim and, and cut it into inch and a half strips. Before I took it to the customer's house, I pre-cut all the trim, not accounting for the spaces that it had to be fit against the molding, but I didn't permanently attach it because based on the levelness of the floor, that trim will have to be adjusted. This is the space, there's the refrigerator. I removed all the molding. Um, I didn't get a ton of footage from installing this because I don't like filming in people's houses. These projects are already a ton of work for one person. Filming adds a lot of time onto it, so I usually just film the highlights. This is attaching, finally attaching that kind of standalone cabinet to the standalone wall um, for this side one, this was really simple installed. The floor was really level and flat, so I basically just propped that bottom in place, put the top on, and then I could slide the cabinets in place. You can see I added some pocket hole screws to the bottoms of these. Um, they'll be screwed into the base so that everything stays a little sturdy. Tried to, I try and do all this stuff in the shop before, before coming to site. Those are those two cabinets in place. Like I said, really simple install on this one. I didn't have to scribe or anything. I could put that piece of trim in the corner and finally attach that, as well as attach the, the final trim to the middle. Usually these take about four days. This one took, took two. And without the piece over by the microwave cabinet is what took the longest time. This I probably could have gotten done in a day and a half. There's that upper trim with the angle that coincides with the angle of the crown so that the top will be flat. And then I could go through and attach all of the, the crown. So this was kind of, you could see the spacer wall kind of hidden on the right hand side. That upper cabinet over the fridge, I didn't show a building at all because like I said, this was a specialized piece. And then the photos aren't great because the, the paint's still a little bit wet. A lot of touch ups with the transfer of this stuff. But that is basically what that looks like. You go in the space and add all the bottom trim as well. Like I said, I didn't get a, lo a lot of great footage of doing this, especially in smaller spaces. It's just harder to film, but that's the finished product.